Well, sure. it is my huge pleasure to welcome on the podcast today. I've been so excited about this. We are here talking to Paul Venables, who plays the truly wonderful Jacob. Paul, welcome to All About the Archers. Oh, thank you very much. It's really nice to be here. I'm, I'm honoured to be on your show. <laughs> well, Paul, if you, if, if you don't mind, we just need to start with a bit of um, housekeeping, if that's OK with you. Um, firstly, can I just check that you're not wearing your gladiator skirt? Because it'll just send <laughs> our, our female listeners into a tizzy. Can I just check that for a second? No, I, I don't have my gladiator skirt with me. OK. All right. At the moment, no. It's dry cleaning. <laughs> 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 It got and quite. It got ruined in the rain. <laughs> no, it actually, it didn't get ruined in the rain because it was actually waterproof. <laughs> so, so it hasn't shrunk. That's good. No, um, it hasn't shrunk. Yet. And uh, in the spirit of gagriculture, um, I, I should warn you, Paul, that uh, if any of your answers exceed three minutes, uh, you will hear this sound. If, uh, so just laying, just laying the ground rules here, uh, Paul. The sad, and... the sad, sad thing is I loved ringing that bell. <laughs> and... That is the saddest thing. I, I really, I, when you give someone a bell in a recording oh, studio, I bet. it's very powerful. <laughs> yeah. And um, obviously if you get a bit saucy, Paul, and you go off script, we will have to interrupt you, I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> so those, those, yes. are, those okay. are the house rules, Paul. I don't, I don't want... I don't want that noise. No. no. <laughs> okay. But uh, f actually, feel, do. Feel, feel free to be saucy. We like a bit of sauce. Now, you must have been <laughs> delighted, talking of agriculture, um, Paul, that Jacob actually turned out to be the funniest thing in it. Well, it was such. A, it was one of those things when they uh, kind of launched that bit of story. When I when I got the scripts, I was I kind of, you know you read through, and I'm normally in the vet's office and things like that, or dealing with horses. But you know, it was so funny when you read it. You know, it, it, it just really, really leapt off the page, and it was. I thought, oh, this is going to be, this is really going to be great fun, you know. And yeah. it's so nice to be the do, to do the Christmas show, even though it is in, you know, November. <laughs> that's Christmas for me. That's Christmas. That's Archer's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you stole the show. Um, you 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 were even oh, funnier well, than Jasper Carrot. I mean, Sykesy. Sorry. I should no, Jasper. He was great, wasn't he? He was really good. Yeah. <laughs> and it was lovely to work with him. And he was just you think, Oh my god, I you you were part of my childhood. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it, it was very very strange because he you know, do you remember Funky Moped and all that yeah. sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Magic that, we just all, yeah, we used to learn is it sing it at school and things like that. <laughs> it definitely. I was wondering if Jacob could have any pet that he could that he could have in the world, what would he have? Would he stick with horses or go somewhere a bit more exotic? Well, I think he's exotic? such a horse person, isn't he? Mm -hmm. he d I mean, I think he kind of likes all the other animals, but horses... But he hasn't got his own horse, as far as I know. So I don't know what else we, would he have. I think he might like a cat. Have, They're a have, bit independent, aren't they? Have Hilda. <laughs> Hilda? <laughs> yeah, yeah, have, have Hilda. <laughs> but, you know, I think cats come and go and do their own thing, don't they? And I think he'd, he'd respect that. Mm. Mm, it suits Jacob, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's well. low main, well, kind of low maintenance. You've got to feed it, but um, I think he would maybe like a cat. Yeah, I kind of. But he's so. He's, I think what he really connects with horses, doesn't he? That's that's his real thing, mm -hmm. and that's great fun to do because um, I know n I'm so hopeless with horses, <laughs> <laughs> but to be given like this kind of role of authority <laughs> with horses. <laughs> Well, my question was going to be, Paul, was that you, you, you were a very convincing vet, so you, you have no veterinary experience, you've no horse well, experience, do you... I'll tell you about this, Lauren, this is very embarrassing. I've got two dogs and um, two cats, and I'm often in the vets, and, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm quite poor as, because of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm often in the vet, and the other day I was in the vet and, um, <laughs> with my dog, and one of the vet room's doors were open and I just thought, you know, I probably could see a dog or a cat. You know, I, <laughs> I, I reckon I, I probably could do it. You know, I've been on the arches, I've been playing a vet for some time. You know. Probably at that stage where I could now begin yeah. to see animals professionally. Yeah, just, just check over. Yeah. 
Yeah. The scales. This is what the archers does to you, you see. Yeah. <laughs> I quickly came to my senses and realised I must get out quick. <laughs> as, as, as you were led out by Harrison, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my follow-up question was going to be, do you even like animals? But with two dogs and two cats, you obviously do. I do, really. Like, we've got three sheep. Oh, wow. Um, in, in, our, in our little field outside and um, chickens. So, we, yeah, we're quite an animal-bound family. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think they're, they're really important animals, aren't they? I think I can't mm. imagine life without an animal around. Mm. They kind of mm. root you and ground you mm. to, you know, just to be with something that's not human mm. that you put all your time and care into. So, yeah, I really, really love animals. Do you do any method acting with your sheep at all? <laughs> I don't do any method acting with the sheep. <laughs> Um, I don't do any method acting. Um, so it's not. Um, no, I, 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 I. Yeah, no. So no, I, I, I'm. Uh, I'm not a farmer on any uh, any level in any way. Um, but um, my wife looks after the sheep more than me. I'm very good. Well, I was interested if you were aware of the. Uh, well, how high Jacob is held in listeners' esteem, and. The, the outrage well, when I'm not at all no oh. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> honestly it, oh. heartthrob R us is Jacob uh, you should know really? that. yeah Ab absolutely he is winning hearts everywhere and the uproar when Stella's dog Weaver was um, hurt and it wasn't Jacob on duty because everyone said if Jacob had been on duty Weaver would be alive to tell the tale <laughs> Well, I know. I mean, if you don't, you've got to use me more in that bedroom. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. I I don't really know what goes on outside. You know, out, outside doing it. You know, you you do it, and it's very contained. And I I don't look at social media. I don't. I'm not on social media or anything like that. So I I never mm. know wow. how how it's going how it's going down. People do say, you mm. know, if they know I'm in it. But it's weird being on the radio. Some someone on the in the cast said. I think it was. I can't remember who said it, but he said, you know, archers actors, they're like snow leopards. You, uh, <laughs> you don't see them very often, but they're there. <laughs> yes. you, know, you, don't, you don't know when they're there. Well, we can I assure you. Harrison who said that. Harrison, not me. We can assure you, Paul, that uh, female hearts are a throbbing over Jacob. Definitely. Oh, really? Yeah. They know you're there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and picking up on Philippa's point, we have... Uh, uh, a genuine vet who listens to the podcast and she made exactly that point she said that uh, animals chances of surviving are much higher if Jacob sees it rather than Alistair <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I won't tell Michael that I'm a junior partner really I'm the new person <laughs> now of course Jac uh, Jacob is known and loved for his bluntness and brutal honesty isn't he is that something that was which was directed or did you decide to introduce that well, no, it was it was very much part of Jeremy Howe's, I think, conception of the of this character com coming in when when I uh, was speaking to him about doing it. You know, he he had this idea of you know, of the, and the writers, I guess, but the the this idea of someone who couldn't help but say things directly. Mm. You know, it just was in it wasn't in his nature to mess around or say something that wasn't accurate. Mm. So I, I remember looking at the, the first scripts. I don't know if anyone remembers, but I, I had these lines where people kept on offering me cake, yeah. <laughs> and, and I kept on saying, I "Don't like cake," yeah. you know, which is quite a rude thing to say. Yeah. If someone offers you a nice bit of cake, especially in Ambridge, yeah. I should imagine, you know, lots of the cakes are quite well made. Well, um, yeah. But um, no, so I had to say I was very blunt. You know, I don't, I don't like cake, and, mm. and at the beginning, I felt quite rude saying it but um, after a while it's, it's remarkably liberating because <laughs> you could just start saying all the things that you wouldn't normally say in, in other people go well that's Yakov he's just <laughs> so I think I probably should I could become a bit more like Yakov in my life I'm probably too <laughs> eager to please than, than you are. Is, he, is he meant to be uh, is there meant to be a suggestion that there's, there's neurodiversity there? Is, is he on the well, spectrum? Well, people have said, yeah, someone said to me, you know, is he on the spectrum? And I suppose I always, I always think with things like that, everybody's on the spectrum mm -hmm. in some way, you know, mm. you know, things like OCD and uh, we're all, we're all, we're either right in what the extreme end or the other end or in the middle somewhere. And I think he is someone who, I thought of him as someone who, 
is very in touch with reality of the, the reality of the situation all the time. If it's not if it's not real and he can't see it and sense it, he doesn't really understand it. Hmm. So he's you know I, I call him sensate. He's everything's about sensation, um, and he's not very particularly intuitive. He's not particularly touchy feely, but he's got to it's got to make sense to him uh, in the here and now. And again, that's quite immediate, isn't it, for someone to be like that? Mm. You know, it's you, you. It can be a bit. It can catch you unawares and make you think, "Oh, who, who am I talking to?" But it's it's also quite enlivening because you, it, it make it pulls you up short. Mm. And I think that's what's so amazing about the relationship he has with Kate because mm. they mm. come from these two extremes. She's totally intuitive, and he's totally ch- checking reality all the time. <laughs> and it's, I think that's a really nice kind of yeah, combination yeah. but he can be very sensitive can't he I mean, he spent hours looking yes, for that yes, wristband didn't he, he spent hours looking he did, for that wristband he did yeah no he, he did and, and it's it's kind of um I, I don't know whether the, i don't know many of the writers on the archers but what i sense is that they're very good at right at st- they start a character and then i think they write it with playing to the actor's strengths or you know or bringing in new dimensions so i think i started off very gruff and um, taciturn mm. and I still am but that you get to see other parts of him mm. which are quite nice mm. and quite caring mm. and that's that's really nice because as an actor sometimes you think oh I'm just playing one thing that's mm. all they let me play but I, I think with Jacob he surprises you and he plays the, the other thing is he plays the church organ doesn't he <laughs> so Every now and then I go, not only am I a very good ex-con deck, I'm also, also good, on the good keys. at the church. I'm good on the keys. I don't know whether it's time for an album. I think probably oh, yeah. it is. It is, it is I'm time. thinking a Christmas Jacob, yeah. Ja- Christmas with Jacob album. Yeah. Yeah. Some Scandinavian stuff yeah, in there. Yeah, lovely. It's guaranteed to really, really... Um, <laughs> sell Paul, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, following on from your temptation at the vets, have you then been tempted to go into a church and have a tingle on the organ? <laughs> well, yeah, kind. No, I haven't. I haven't. But I, I would. I can't play the organ at all. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> 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 Holy noise. <laughs> well, most churches are locked now, aren't they? Mm. I love church. I really loved going into churches. Mm. And uh, I was the other day. I was going on a walk, and there was a beautiful old Norman church, and I really wanted to go and look inside it but it was just all locked up but so i, I would have played the organ <laughs> if, I didn't, if, they, if they'd have let exactly. me in. <laughs> yeah. couldn't couldn't get in there <laughs> well you you in real life as paul um, yes. were in skyfall so if the if the script writers decided to take something in a totally different direction and made Jacob the 007 of ambridge oh. who would be your m and q oh, oh. sorry q <laughs> Linda Snell. Yes. Obviously. Yes. yes. <laughs> and Q, I suppose, one of the Grundies. Yes. Mm. Got to be, got to be one of the, one of the Grundies, really. They, yeah. they, they, yeah. they know, they know how to get hold of equipment. <laughs> yeah. All their weird, they can, wonderful stuff. They can lay their hand on any gadget <laughs> you name. <laughs> they do. Oh, I had a little look on the old Archers website earlier. A lovely fetching photo of you on there, Paul. And um, oh. there was also some likes and dislikes of Jacobs. And I was wondering if if you can tell me if any of these are your likes or dislikes. So, okay. likes. There's three. Three of his this likes. Is what Jac- this is what Jacob likes, is it? Yep. Horses. Okay. Yes, I do. Real- well. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to answer me as you go along? No, no, let's go. Yeah, horses. What do you think of horses? Do you like them? Horses, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, bit scared of them. Me too, actually. And uh, and I, I used to when when you're an actor, you are duty bound to tell casting directors when they ask you if you horse ride, you say yes, excellent. <laughs> yes. Because you think, well, I'm not going to get the job if I say I'm not. I yeah. can't horse ride. So you get all the, all these actors. There's a lot of actors who are very good horse yeah. horse people. <laughs> do you say yes? Yeah, but very... I'm a bit scared. I can. I yeah. can. Ride I don't them, say that. No. I do. I've got become more honest. I don't get so many jobs. But I I, I think you know they're kind of. Um, I've I have to, I've had to go on a horse when I've I'm okay on a horse. Okay. But you know when they want you to stop on a mark and things like that. 
you really know you need to know what you're doing. <laughs> so I've got I've got into a couple of scrapes with horses on television. Oh wow! Well, the next yeah. one is Rioca. So do you like Rioca? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like. Really like Rioca. My my daughter's doing a year in Spain um, at the moment for her degree, Spanish degree, and we've gone out to visit her a few times. And uh, I keep on going into these bars where they only serve wine. <laughs> and it's so nice. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, there's no beer, there's no nothing else. All it is is Spanish wine. And it's just, it's been an amazing kind of experience because all these different Riocas I didn't know existed. So yes, I do. We're the same. Lovely. God, am I turning out to be the same well, as Yakov? The third yeah. one, the third of his, of his three likes, are quiet yeah. pubs. How do you feel about quiet pubs? Yeah, I like them as well. <laughs> <laughs> I am him. Well, I'm turning into him. Maybe I'll start getting horse riding lessons and then I'm just going. Well, <laughs> then I we, will be him. Should we match up to see if your dislikes match yeah, up see, as well? Maybe, right. yeah, see, see if so I am. There's, there's four dislikes. So the first one okay. is shy as ale. How do you feel about ale? I like ale. Oh, okay. Oh. Well. Yeah. I know, okay. so yeah, it's not so good. And he also dislikes gossip. Do you dislike gossip? I kind of feel gossip in real life is kind of what human beings do mm. <laughs> i think whether whether we like to admit it or not we we all we all gossip to a certain degree and probably it's part of our social functioning isn't it mm. yeah to, to gossip with each other that's how we form little groups and subgroups but i kind of think it can be a bit poisonous mm. and i i kind of think i try to i live in a village um I'm sure I'll piss somebody off in the village probably, but I <laughs> I try to I try to keep a low profile. <laughs> okay, and maybe so everyone's happy with it. The third one is deep conversations. How do you feel about deep conversations? No, I do like deep conversations. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you yeah. I do then, like deep conversations. Yeah. I don't like parties as I'm a bit older now, but I don't like parties where you can't really hear what, what people oh, are saying. No. Or if you go to a gig with a friend you haven't seen for ages you go in you can't hear or speak to each other mm. and then you leave the gig and you haven't had a chat yeah. mm. you know you've just had you know just a lot you've just mm. shouted the whole time <laughs> um so I, but i do like I'd, I'd rather have a i'd rather have a meaningful conversation personally so the last of his dislikes and this won't come as a surprise to you it's cake <laughs> cake so you yeah. must know what's your thoughts on cake love it Oh, okay. So, yeah. I really like it. I have to try and be careful. To, I, I, I'd eat it all the time if I could. Yeah. yeah. My, yeah. Um, my, my son and I have a, have a uh, he's about 20, 20, 23, and he, we have this thing, could you eat a pasty now? <laughs> and yeah. we, we, we've discovered that we could almost eat a pasty at any point, okay. <laughs> which is not, it's not very healthy, but I always think, yeah, I probably could eat one, a nice one, yeah, I'd eat one. Well, after like a really filling meal or something, Even a big meal, yeah, oh, I could right, have, okay. have a pasty. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> that's fantastic. Have you got well, one? I love that. <laughs> We've got, we've talked about cakes, Paul, so really we should talk about something, another food item that we discuss regularly, which is the subject of biscuits. And if you had to say what yes. Jacob's favourite biscuit would be, what would Jacob's preferred biscuit be, do you think? Well, it could be a Scandinavian crisp bread. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Too many crumbs, Which is quite dry and punishing. He'd, he'd be Too a bit, many crumbs. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe a Garibaldi. Yeah. <laughs> I love a Garibaldi. Which I think, is a, I, I think they're a strange biscuit. Mm. I love them. They're mm. kind of, I don't quite know what they are. They're kind of like, <laughs> when you find those bits of fruit in them, you think, hang on, get out. What are you? Are you yeah. digested or a, what are you doing in here? So I, I think maybe uh, Jacob's a bit of a Garibaldi. <laughs> <really, aren't laughs> <you? laughs> if I can extend the food questions, actually, I mean, obviously, you must have a favourite make of yoghurt, do you? <laughs> well, in real life. <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, do you, do you remember ski yogurt? Yeah. Does any, am I too old? Yeah. No, I, I remember be, skis. When, when yogurts first were introduced, you know, when they became yeah. something that we ate in England, yeah. there was yeah. a kind of ski yogurt. It was always people yeah. skiing down some was. alpine mm. slope, yeah. wasn't it? And I was it actually very healthy and refreshing. Yes. Yeah. I was actually thinking of Yakult. Yeah. Yakult. 
Yeah, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> That's his nickname on, on social media. Paul, you need to get on social media. I, I his... don't do any no. social media. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm completely don't. in the dark. But no, I his... don't want to. I don't think that will work. No, but that's his I nickname. I think when, when it first started, someone said, oh, you know, there's an Archers forum or something. And I thought, yeah. oh, oh I'll, I'll have a look at it. And I kind of went on it. And then it was just saying things about me that I thought, I don't want to read that. <laughs> <laughs> so I well, very it's... quickly came off. I went and hid under the table. Well, they all think they all think you're sexy now, anyway. So don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, Yakult is your nickname, Paul. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Well, well I'm yeah. quite good for your gut, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> 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 or maybe I don't know. <laughs> Kate, we got to talk. We got to talk, Kate. Do you think Yakov could ever end up living with her full time? Well, I don't know. Please you don't. never know what they. <laughs> what they're going to throw at you, do you? Do you? Um, well, the thing is with Kate, she. What always amazes me about um, Perdita and Kate is that when you read the script and Kate says something really outrageous, you kind of think, I don't know how an actor's going to say this when you read it. <laughs> and then when she does it in the replay, you think, My God, it's brilliant. That's how. She, and she says it with such mm. uh, authority and belief. Yeah. I, I think it really it's marvellous because it really works but you think as an actor I don't want to, oh how would I say that I don't mm. have to try and make the audience like me or not like me but Perlita just really bangs it on the nose mm. and I think that really works mm. so in yeah. terms of them living together I don't I think possibly they could because they <laughs> <laughs> but but maybe they'd have a modern relationship and maybe they, they wouldn't be at the moment they're kind of co -ha she comes round sometimes, doesn't yeah. she? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I go there, so it's a it's a bit. I don't know what they'll do with that, but I think mm. he does like his own space and he does like order. And he can't but stand a same, mess, can he? he can't stand he a can't mess. Can't stand a mess. But mm. he. But at the same time, he's kind of he does. He, there's a yielding in him, isn't there? Uh, yeah, mm. he does yield to people eventually, mm. and even mm. even when. Um, someone really upsets him or something goes wrong in the in the end he does he does try to find a kind of more forgiving place i think yeah i, but like, I, I the, like about him. i like the like modern representation you mentioned of the relationship like i know plenty of people that are in those relationships where they're in a romantic relationship with someone but they'll just never move in with each other so i'd quite yeah, yeah, like they, to see that yes. like yeah yeah it could be quite good couldn't it because yeah. they they're, they're committed but they don't do the whole thing of sh lumping everything in yeah. together I'd like to see it. <laughs> or if he moved in with Kate, he'd have to have his own man cave that had all of his stuff neatly lined out and everything. Yeah. But what do you think would be in his man cave? Do, well, I think he'd have a kind of sta a stable-looking building, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. In the, in the, in with <laughs> one of them doors. <laughs> one of those stable doors. It's got to have a stable door, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I don't think it would have a beer pump or anything like that. I suppose. No. He'd he'd uh, he might have a bit of Scandinavian woodcraft somewhere. Nice, yeah. Yeah, some. Uh, some he maybe have a. He might have a uh, uh, a little kind of practice organ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he might. Yeah, like a little, my little kind of synthesizer organ with a church oh, setting. Yeah, yeah. That'd be the, <laughs> the Switch on the church. It's all sounding quite second. appealing, isn't it? <laughs> it sounds quite oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, some, you make some hot toddies and stuff like that, you know, Scandinavian style thing. And then a kind of, I guess, like a, a twig like birch. So oh. that you could, you could rush out and throw yourself in the pond and then, and then flagellate yourself. Yeah, a bit yeah. of flagellation. Yes. Yeah. 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 After you've yeah. done the organ. Oh, yeah. It's, all, it's only, only, only for circulation, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I think yes, yeah, yeah. They have Jacob. I suppose would probably be into the cold water kind of thing, yeah. wouldn't he? Mm, probably I would like say. a bit of that. Yeah, surprised they haven't done that. Very good. Mm. Would he have a sauna? He might have a sauna, might he? Yeah, mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. It's getting quite. Mm. A bit, it's becoming more like a kind of miniature village outside his farm, yeah. isn't it? And There's so, a sauna, a stable, a lake. Ab Sorry, Kate. There's just no room for you. There's no room. No. no. And and Aberon permanent loop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you um have a favourite storyline you've been involved in? Paul? Well, no. I think I think I I really like the agricultural thing because yeah. I d I did really enjoy doing that. I mean I because it was just 
I thought it was just so delightful. Yeah, and it, great fun. And yeah. it, it was, and it was, it was kind of innocent in a way. Mm. And I, yeah. I really liked that. I thought there's not so much of that around at the moment. You know, where mm. someone, you know, who doesn't, also someone who he he really didn't want to do the comparing because it was really outside what he who he is, but because he felt obliged to to help with the church he really pushed himself to do it mm. and i felt that tension was was really nice the fact that he, he did, and then of course when he did do it he started to become quite didactic and, and bossy mm. and um kind of slightly like the limelight in some sort of bizarre way <laughs> yes and he wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't budge an inch would he no no that was, he that's what was funny yeah no, it was funny, and you know all, all the you know, and I thought Linda Snell was just amazing in that bit as well. You know, she was she's she's such a delight to work with. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And you've mentioned about the cake scenes, which were some of your first scenes, but I just wonder what you remember from sort of day one recording, Paul. What well, what are your memories of day that? one? I see. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this and um, be in the Archers, but I wasn't, I didn't really know the, Ar I did know the Archers, but I didn't listen to the Archers. And I knew of it and I knew it was often on, you know, in the background. But I'd only started listening to the Archers because of a very good friend of mine called Tim Watson, who plays Rob Titchener, was in it. And I know, and some friends had told me, oh, you know, Tim's doing this thing on the radio. And I started listening to it and I got hooked. Mm -hmm because it was so compelling mm. and tim was so did you ever have tim on the show no can you get him no, on for we'd us? love to I'm we'd sure. love to i'm sure he would <gasps> i'm sure he would i'll ask him. oh please. He, oh, he's the so... nicest kindest <clears throat> vegetarian man <laughs> and deep, deeply ethical person and he was playing this absolute monster and he just it was so you it made it so powerful because you think i'm really being I'm really being pulled into this whole storyline. So I started listening to it, listening to the Archers then. But then when I got offered the job, this is a bit, this is so naive, but I, I thought, I imagined when you went to Birmingham, you'd be in a big rehearsal room with a big trestle table and there'd be, all the Archers would be around the table <laughs> and everybody's got their scripts. And you, you know, you see everybody, but of course it's not like that at all. You're very compartmentalized and you only see the people in your episode mm. and you, you sometimes you don't see people for years mm. you know and, 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 and you but you're talked about or you talk about them so it's a very it's a very mm. yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to because I thought I'm going to meet everybody mm. and uh, it'll be like this great big company but you on the whole only meet about seven or eight people each time mm. well I mean of, of, the, of the characters that you are familiar with now <laughs> in Ambridge um, who, who do you think Jacob, not you, Paul, who do you think Jacob would love to see the back of? Which character? <laughs> oh. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think he's got, I don't think he's kind of got any kind of sworn enemies, really. I think he finds, he finds people really irritating and time-wasting <laughs> and um, sometimes pointless. But I don't, I don't. I don't think he'd actually wish anyone away. I don't. He think, was quite I don't happy think... to see the back of his brother, wasn't he? He'd had enough of him he, by the time he left. Yeah, I, I think. Oh, yeah. I don't know whether they're going to do something with that story oh. again. Um, oh. I, you know, because the the guy who plays uh, my brother is actually a very old friend of mine. So, oh, lovely! Yeah, so I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to do some scenes with him if they ever do. But um, yeah, he was messy. Yeah. He was messy yeah. and he's irresponsible. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um wa a wayward. Well, he's quite a moral he's quite a moral man, isn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Well, he's I mean, kind Kurt... of got quite a moral compass. Well Kurt Kirsty would like to see him back, wouldn't she? Mm-hmm. She would. Yes. Mm. Yes. That all got a bit Yeah. Hot, didn't it? Hot. <laughs> it did. It well did. It did. Like it a a hot, even though yeah. <laughs> Talking of hot, we've got some hot questions from our Facebook group. Yeah. Here, so prepare yourselves okay. for these yes. if you may. Quentin, you have the first one. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I um, can't promise <clears throat> I'll be able to answer them well, but I'll, I'll do my best. Well, the first one comes from Rachel, Paul, and she gets uh, stuck in with this one. She says, how does Paul feel about being Ambridge's new sex symbol? 
<laughs> well, I didn't know until I didn't know until tonight. <laughs> it's all very new. <laughs> I didn't know until tonight, and I'm obviously going to buy some leopard pajamas. Yeah, lovely. That's the first <laughs> and, thing you uh, have to do. Yeah, turn up the Barry White, obviously. <laughs> um, and uh, slip into something a bit more comfortable, kind of thing. But I did. I had no idea. I'm like, you know. I'm probably oh, yeah. yes. It's probably only only fair and just that I'm I'm a sex symbol, finally, but on radio. Mm. <laughs> right. Are you are you are you rather chuffed? No, I'm delighted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> well, I've got a, I've got a it's more of a just a, she just wanted to tell you this more of a comment from Victoria Baldwin saying Jacob is my favourite character. You can tell him that he's been my oh. favourite character since he first arrived. And also, they wanted me to tell you, can we make sure that Hilda's safe and happy in her new home, please? I do worry about poor Hilda. Are you worried about Hilda as well, Paul? I think she's, it'll be all right. Yeah, I think. It's going to be all okay. Right tell now. her not to worry. Yeah. It'll be all right. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry, Victoria. It's all under control. <laughs> and, say, and, and say thank you, Victoria. That's very kind of her. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so, Angie Lomas is saying, can you ask Paul how he feels about playing such a deadpan character? Well, I love it. I love it, because I'm not very, okay. I'm not deadpan. Because I'm quite, you know, outgoing and um, I quite like being around people and chatting. But it's it's delightful to play someone who is deadpan, because it's, I suppose it's the opposite to your personality, isn't it? To your every, to your conscious personality. To, to, to be to be like that and to be given good lines and uh, and, and, and be like that so I know I really like it it's an it's an antidote to, to, to real life I mean they, the cliche is that if you're playing a, a villain it's really nice because you can get all your kind of the, all your horrible bits out and express them and get them, get, get them out in the open air but I think with with Jacob it's a bit similar to me I, I'm not like him so I, it's really nice to inhabit someone like that. I think it's nice that he's such a contrast as well. No one yes. else is really like that now. There's no one, so there isn't anyone You like are that. the no. only one like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no one else does that. <laughs> doing, a, no, doing a Jacob as its name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next question is from Dawn. And I think we've answered this one, but there may be another pet that you haven't mentioned. Dawn says, does the actor have any pets of his own as a pet shop opener? I'm interested to know. So you've got the sheep that you've oh, talked yes. well, about got, and the I've got, I've got the sheep, I've got chickens, we've got chickens, and we've got a, a deer hound dog and a little mongrel white dog and then two cats. And we just got our last cat. We found our cat under uh, a lorry on, on a on a main road and oh. someone someone else found it and brought it to the vet and we rescued it oh it was a lovely little little lovely little cat so we've we've now got an extra cat oh lovely yeah <laughs> next one's from so it's a bit like a vet's here really <laughs> <laughs> I, I i don't i obviously don't treat them but <laughs> yes <laughs> no, well, no. Well, well, more years on the archers and yeah. i'll be yeah. just a treated. bit of minor surgery <laughs> Be fine. <laughs> um, okay, Paul. The next one comes from Annie, and again, you've sort of hinted at this, but she just wants to know just how do how does Jacob cope with Kate? Well, I I, th I think you know it it, it, it's, it is that opposites thing, isn't it? Where you, if you are such an ordered, if you are a very ordered man who never ever takes risks, and you know likes everything just so. To meet someone who is like a firework display of chaos could be appealing to you. It might kind of give you, I don't know, it might, I don't know, uh, live out that other side of you a bit. So you can live out, you can live out the unconscious side of you <coughs> through another person. It's almost liberating for him, isn't it? I think it, bits of it are liberating and it's kind of, he, and, and like I hear this a lot, that people say that they're, when people are married to, like if a very uh, gregarious person is married to a very shy, taciturn person, it's great because you can leave parties early because you can say, oh, my husband doesn't like parties, but actually a bit of you wants to leave. <laughs> it's a good excuse to get out of parties or dinner parties early. You say, oh, no, he's, just, he's, he's miserable. He doesn't, he's just not very outgoing. So I think, I think um, 
maybe there's a bit of that going on. They can they can both rely on the other person to do the thing they can't yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, we can we can, we can say we, we we're going to do a Jacob, can't we, in future? Yeah, but I'm doing a Jacob. Are you doing a um, virtual consultation, sir? Yes, I can see that cat looks very well. <laughs> I can tell you a little bit about that cat. Uh, just looking at that cat, it looks to me grey. <laughs> yeah. And He's all, a what pro. Color it, what colours was it this morning? Same, same. She's doing very well. Oh, well, then it, it's doing very well. Then. <laughs> I think if they change drastically in colour during the day, uh, you need to come back. So I've got a question from Pat, who says, Oh, how we love Jacob. And Paul Venables is brilliant playing him. What were you told about the character, Paul, when you um, when you took the part? I was told that he was he had Scandinavian parentage. And that he was probably brought brought up in um, a Sca Scandinavia somewhere, and then went to school in England. And I'll tell you an interesting thing that happened when I got offered this part. My daughter had just for Christmas bought me one of those DNA testing things. Oh right. So which I, and and, and I'm, I've always you know pretty uh, British. Um, I've got no kind of connections with any other countries. Anyway, we did my DNA just before I got offered the part, and I was 45% Scandinavian. Wow! <laughs> and then I got offered a Scandinavian vet to play on the radio. <laughs> so it was, it was rather, there was a bit of synchronicity there. It was strange. Did you do yeah. that with the background thinking, well, if they don't give me the part, then I can show them this DNA test and say, look, you're not going to find anyone I can prove that I'm Jacob. Worthy yeah. of this part. It's in my DNA. <laughs> 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 so they told me that you know he didn't have a scan he didn't have a Swedish accent as such but there maybe was something in the way he spoke that he picked up from his parents so I tried to just to do a little bit of color you know when I when I when I spoke uh, oh, but wow. not much not much he's educated in England mm. yeah brilliant so Rob has brought up the agricultural side of things again. So he said, just as Jasper Carrot wrote his own Farmageddon, or whatever it was called, <laughs> how much input did Paul have on Jacob's far funnier performance? None. <laughs> I, I, I did, the, the, the guy who wrote, I think it was a man, I can't remember who was it wrote. They were just very, very good scripts. You just thought, you know, sometimes when you read a script, you think, oh, you know, that, I need to change that, or this could be mm. done better. But he just did them all. You just thought this is exactly how what Jakob would say. So that was why I really enjoyed it because it was like when when you get a script that really fits like that, it's just a joy because you you just have to say it really. But I mean, yeah. I you know, I, I I enjoyed bossing everyone around. <laughs> that was quite nice. <laughs> my 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 inner kind of I don't know what it was teacher boss came was allowed a, a bit of free reign so that was good so I probably was maybe a bit more bossy than the script said. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> it begs the question: Do you bring Jacob home and boss your family about? No, I think it'd be a disaster. <laughs> no, my my kids don't really know. My my kids don't know the archers. They go sometimes they go, Dad. Someone says that you're you're famous because you're in the archers. <laughs> And I, I, it, it always strikes me as I'm always a bit shocked by it. it's what's so lovely about people who like the arches is that there's there's such a passionate interest mm. Mm. and it, it, it's it's really made it's really made me appreciate the arches in a way I didn't really know before because it's so it seems so important and the, everybody on the show I often sit in read throughs and when I hear different actors read I just think they're all so brilliant. Okay, we got uh, one from Barry now, and he says Jacob's life appears to exist of equine vetting and calming Kate's emotional eruptions. What do you think Jacob does for relaxation and recovery? Well, we've got my shed, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> we've got my we've shed. Had, I mean, we've I mean, had flagellation. Go, we've, got, we've got flagellation. <laughs> I can go to the shed. I can play a little bit of uh, Scandinavian discordant choral music Ooh. I can um, I don't know he doesn't drink particularly heavily does he um, well. but I, th I think he, he was in there was an episode once when he was in a pan they did a panic room kind of storyline oh, yes. for yes. someone's birthday mm. yeah. and he was he was very good at 
that he kind of liked doing that working out all the clues so I think he'd yeah. he'd do something around like that working something out he's probably very good at all those cryptic crosswords and things like that mm. okay um, Nikki asks about Eric your brother uh, yeah. so he said uh, Nikki says Jacob's brother Eric sounded rather nice do you think the brothers will be reunited in the future and if so who would win a wrestling match if Kate's roving eye was turned well, the guy who plays my brother is very good looking, so he probably would win. <laughs> and he's also he's also an ex boxer, so oh, he beat yeah. he beat the living daylight out of him. But I'm, I'm much really cleverer. Doing I'm it. much cleverer than him. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope they do. I'd really love it. It would be great yeah. to work. He's Steve, called Steve Hartley. I'd love to I'd love to do some episodes with him. So I I I, I hope they do that. Hmm. Oh, it's a great crossed. combination. Yeah, yeah, it would be great. And our last question's from Max, and he says, Jakob often plays the organ at St. Stephen's. If you could pick any song or tune to play there, what would it be? It can be anything. Well, the other day when I was doing, um, suggesting that I might do some music for Christmas, I, I suggested something by, it was Tompt. The Scandinavian Goblin, or something, <laughs> and, 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 and Alan, the vicar, was utterly horrified. So yeah, I do remember that because I remember thinking yeah, that's yeah. probably quite like that. Yeah, yeah, it might be interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it's coming out on my Christmas album. So oh, it's brilliant! Only, so it's only about <laughs> ten months, and um, that's going to hit the shops, I'm sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> well we come to the final bit Paul which is the question that was raised from the last member of the cast that we interviewed now the last member of the cast oh, actually, was it wasn't one it was two we had Maddie and Ben we had Chelsea and Ben on together <coughs> so actually okay. we've got a question from each of them <gasps> double Maddie's, right. Maddie's question is if Jacob was an animal what would it be? Oh. Well, I've got two things came immediately into my mind. Uh, one was an eagle, mm. because he's Ooh. quite beady. You know, he's kind of, mm. he's kind of, he doesn't rush around, and he's got his eye on everything. Focused. Uh, foc very, very mm. focused. Um, uh, that's the first thing that came into my mind. Mm. Can I think of another animal? Maybe like a. I think he's quite. Um, fe there's something a bit feline about mm. Jacob. Maybe mm. a bit of a leopard. Mm. You know, he can he can bite, can't he? If he wants to, mm. but he's also quite elusive. Mm. You know, he doesn't uh, he doesn't go into ambush as he can help it. <laughs> well, All that's great. Maybe, maybe with a hint of meerkat as well. Yeah. With a bit of with a bit of a yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the final question is from Ben Ben Norris, who plays Ben Archer, yeah. and he was commenting about how straight laced Jacob can appear sometimes. So his question is, when does the devil come out? Ooh. When does the devil come out of Jacob? Yeah. Well, it would have to be under the uh, the Northern Lights, <laughs> when I think he probably, you know, stripped down. Birch at hand. Birch, birch firmly in hand. Gladiator skirt with on. Bottle of schnapps or vodka and running into the ice with Kate. I imagine. Well, Absolutely there we brilliant. Go. Brilliant. What a moment Put... to end on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there we go. That's radio. Put that on radio. <laughs> You'd almost, you'd, you'd almost think Paul's thought of that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, it has been... Well, I'm, I'm hoping I get some sort of... Oh, go on, go on. <laughs> no, no, please, go on. You carry on, Paul. No, it's made me... Oh, I have, I was going to say, I wanted to... I've, I have wanted to go back to Scandinavia somewhere to kind of reclaim my roots. You know? We, yes. I, mm, I think yeah. I'd, you know, I'd be welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be a whole spin-off. Uh, we'll bring back yeah. the Ambridge Extra. You never, you never know. But, get it, uh, get it, getting back in my heritage. Mm. Yes. Mm. No, Paul, honestly, it's been such a wonderful time just chatting to you and hearing more 
about Jakob. We're so grateful for you joining us. Well, I'm very thrilled to have been asked, so thank you very much. And it's been great to hear questions from people and, you know, just uh, it's really nice to be, you know, to be appreciated and to hear that people enjoy the character. It's really well, lovely. They do. Well, they do. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much indeed, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Oh, thank, thank you. you.